Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Bake in a Murder where I'm gonna not bake something, but <laughs> there's murder. There's always murder involved somehow. So welcome to today's episode. We're gonna be talking about the movie Silence and Darkness. Is that the movie name? Darkness and Silence. Honestly, not the catchiest title in the world. I'm gonna put a poster of the movie right here. I actually discovered it through TikTok, and so I'm kind of fascinated to see your thoughts on it. Do you like this movie? Does it feel like a ripoff of another movie? Let's get into it. But What's first, the other movie? Um, like all of these movies where there's, well, I don't wanna spoil the details, okay. you know? But first, I wanna say something. Collagen. Are you guys running up out of your chair right now? Because that is me. Anytime, I don't know what it is, I make it my New Year's resolution every single year to take collagen supplements, to either put some collagen powder into my coffee, collagen creamer. I thought that was gonna last a while. But after like three days, I always forget to take my collagen supplements. I don't know if it's because it tastes bad, I don't know if it's because it's not an enjoyable experience, but I need more collagen in my life, as well as B12. And if you guys are like me, and there's the sound of those words make you jump out of your chair to be like oh fork I forgot to take it today I've got the answer for you listen what good are supplements if they're just sitting in your pantry I am so glad that I found source I was so amazed at the taste of this so source they have chocolate covered supplements so that you never forget to take those very important supplements and that they're always an enjoyable experience so they've got these glow bites which are pretty much collagen bites I'm already starting on this pack this is my backup you take two a day Amazing. I don't know if it's because they are plant-based. I don't know if that's the reason, but that dark chocolate outer layer just makes it feel like a dessert, What's like a treat. What's the benefit of collagen? Collagen, it helps with your skin texture, skin elasticity, it makes you glow, it makes you stay younger longer, well, looking younger longer. A lot of the times, people say Asians have a lot of collagen in their diet naturally, like in bone broths, you know? But if you guys are vegan, that's not an option for you, or if you're like me, where you're like, I need more collagen, I don't have time for bone broths. Those nasty collagen powders, they taste like you're eating cardboard. So after two days, I'm never drinking it again. But this, it's covered in dark chocolate. Now, it sounds like Oh, maybe they did that so that you can, you'll eat it. Maybe they did that so it's enjoyable. But actually, dark chocolate is proven to be an antioxidant that serves as a prebiotic to help you absorb the vitamins much better. They also have B12 bites, which did you guys know 65% of adults are missing B12 in their diet. These are all vegan, they're plant-based, they're keto-friendly, and 100% sustainable. The collagen is really important because I was a little skeptical about um, plant-based collagen, but research shows that it actually shows up in your your skin two weeks after using them. An animal product collagen takes months for your skin to feel a difference. So try Source today, get 30% off your first order using my link and code MANGO30. So thank you Source for sponsoring today's video and uh, let's get into it. Oh man, I was nervous for this one. So we've seen a lot of movies that are about, you know, these kids who've got these sketchy parents but this one is very complex it's kind of like a mixture of hush um if you guys haven't listened to that bam that one is about a woman who is a deaf and mute horror author who goes into the woods and she gets haunted or not haunted but like tormented by a serial killer very big difference in that one but whatever you get it but this one is fascinating because we're dealing with two sisters and they too live in the isolated woods however it's much different from hush originally from the setup the opening scene you see trees everywhere you see that it looks more like a wholesome area than like a creepy cabin in the woods they've got this nice little porch they've got green grass everywhere they've got an open backyard to play in now what's fascinating is that anna and beth are the two sisters Anna, she is blind, and Beth is mute and deaf. So they have different disabilities, and they are completely codependent on each other at the time that we open into the movie. So they just spend all day with each other. They don't really go to school. They live in this very, very small town. They, yeah, they just hang out at home while their dad goes to work. Now, it seems like their mom has passed away or is no longer in the picture. We'll get into it in a little bit. So Anna, she's blind. She really loves music. She loves listening to music. She loves playing the guitar. She is able to verbally communicate with her father and Beth on the other hand. She's kind of into just um like gymnastics, she seems a little bit more of the shyer of the two. It's very interesting. Now, they are really codependent. They are always talking to each other and really only each other because it's hard to communicate with everyone else. They need each other to function in the world, if that makes sense. 
How old are they? They seem like they're in their teenage years. And so we see them just kind of going through their lives. You kind of get like the picture of how much they need each other. You know, Anna will tell Beth to put a specific DVD into the DVD player and then Beth will do it, but Beth can't listen to it. And it's just a, like a very interesting mix. Now, they we see that they even cook dinner together. Yeah, they cook dinner together and they set up dinner for their dad before he gets home. Now that's, that's kind of where things get a little bit weird. I feel like up until this point, it seemed almost wholesome, and then it starts getting a little bit sinister. And I think it's because of the way that this movie is filmed. So this movie does very odd shots where almost entirety of the movie is filmed um, in a still position. It feels like someone's just tripoding it there. It's not very moving at most of the times, and they did it strategically, I believe. There are moments where a character will stand up, but the camera will stay there. So you're just like face on with their groin. Mm, like your YouTube and video. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> why is this? With this lighting, suddenly this dress looks so creepy. The dad comes home, they've cooked him dinner, they've set the table, and they're like, happy birthday, dad. They hug him, they're all using sign language. Now they sit down and dinner goes on. They talk about random it. Now, th what's after dinner is where it gets really weird. So the dad ends up sitting on the couch and the two girls sit on the floor staring at the dad. It kind of gives me like cult vibes. Like I've never been in a situation when I was in my teenage years at least that I sat on the foot of like the armchair on the floor looking up at my dad. It's just a very weirdly shot. Again, I don't know if it's like the true crimer in me that I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, right? And the dad is like flipping through pictures of them as children and pointing out ones. And they request the dad sing a song for them. And he's like, no, 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 I could never. And they're like, please sing a song for us. And so finally he gets up from the armchair and he starts singing, I've got you under my skin. But he's doing the sign language as he's vocally singing it. And it's just like really odd. It's almost as if these two girls are watching him sing this with like these eyes full of like respect which like we all respect our parents but it was a little more than just like casual like hey dad what's popping you know mm. it was just kind of odd and so the rest of the week continues. They go to the lake that's in their backyard. They skip rocks. Um, Anna really likes to listen to the noise of the rocks. Beth likes to visually see the rocks. They even watch horror movies together. So Beth will actually um, sh um, translate to... I mean, it's kind of confusing because I need to look up... I don't think that they were doing exact sign language because they were speaking with their hands because Anna is blind you know so a lot of it was like um I saw them do a lot of like writing on the hand mm -hmm. and like certain movements moving of the palms meant something mm -hmm. but it wasn't specifically like signing as mm -hmm. I know it to be in the most common term I'm not educated enough they'll literally sign to each other as they're watching the horror movie and they both seem genuinely scared and it's like this experience that both of them are having mm -hmm. and it seems like everything is happy but we know better we know better. They go out the next day and they find a dead duck in their backyard and they immediately start signing to each other and they call for their dad. Now the dad puts it into their campfire and as it's burning to, I guess like roasting, I mean it's already dead, it's just dying, the dad asks the two girls, what is the most common disease in ducks? Which is a very odd thing to ask your daughters. Mm -hmm. And so both of them are like raising their hands in the air, I'm, I want to tell you, I want to tell you. And so he's like, okay, Anna. And Anna says, salmonella. Salmonella. And he says, okay, what are some common symptoms of salmonella? And both of them have their hands shot up in the air. And he's like, okay, Beth, how about you? And she's like, diarrhea, um, maybe some like bloating, fever, dehydration. These are all salmonella, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like he kind of has, again, like a very odd relationship with the daughters. Now, the next morning, finally, we get to follow the dad's day because at this point, we had no idea what this guy does for a living, who he is as a person. We just know that these are his kids. Mm -hmm. And so he gets into the car the neighbor mrs bishop she waves at him and she says good morning doctor so we know that he's a doctor at this point he gets to his um little practice it's a very very small like doctor's office it doesn't even seem like he has a receptionist it seems like a really really small town and so he opens the door and there was a patient already waiting for him her name is mrs long and she's a married woman and mm -hmm. so she sits down at the little T desk in front of the doctor's chair and he gets in front of her and he says okay like what symptoms are you feeling today and she starts immediately unbuttoning his pants and so he's like oh no 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 and she's like what i thought you wanted your birthday present and he's like no 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 i told you we're not gonna do this anymore we're not gonna do this anymore and she looks really disappointed he went 
<laughs> he looks and she looks. He's like, he denied? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I literally just scratched my head. <laughs> oh, I thought you were like this. No, I was just scratching my head. <laughs> and it was like the perfect timing of him being like, no, no, no. And he's, I Are thought you, you, I thought you genuinely were having a reaction to the fact that he declined. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> And so he's like, what are you doing? Like, we're not supposed to be doing this anymore, right? Uh And she's like, what? Like, it's okay. Now, what's weird is that just looking around in the office, it doesn't seem like he's a dentist. This is kind of important because he puts on his gloves and he says, did you brush your teeth? And she's like, of course, I already brushed my teeth. And he opens her mouth wide, looks inside, and he says, you didn't floss. But he's not a dentist? Mm -mm. And so he says, you're dirty. And he puts back on his belt and walks away and sits down at the doctor's office. So we find out that he's a bit of a germaphobe. It seems like he's really scared of diseases, really scared of germs, you know. Mm. Um, We also get a scene in the beginning of the movie where he's like aggressively flossing his teeth. I've never seen a mother forker floss their teeth like that man did. I bet his gums were bleeding. Poor actor, okay? And so he's just aggressively flossing his teeth and he's like, no, you didn't floss, we can't do this. And so he sits down and she just looks confused and he says, you're dirty and you're married so remember to floss next time and just kind of kicks her out and he's just like i'm busy and kicks her out points at the door and she leaves feeling really dejected and she just leaves just like that and so after she leaves he opens he opens a drawer and inside of that drawer there's a bunch of like cassette tapes and one of those like old timey recording things where it's literally you use a tiny little mic and you're just saying like entry it's like one of those audio diaries everyone's a podcaster okay so he opens that up and he says entry 7055 Anna still handles all of the cooking um she has resumed the role of the leader and is pretty comfortable in her role however she she trusts Beth when it's really necessary for her to take over in certain situations I cannot conclude if the dynamic of them is codependent because of their disabilities or if it's a difference in personality clicks off So it's so weird. He audio records all of his thoughts, but it's almost like he's treating his daughters of some sort of like behavioral science experiment. Mm -hmm. Like it just gives you like this really creepy vibe of like, if my dad was doing that about me, um, I'll punch him in the face, right? He's not my dad no more. What a weirdo. And he continues to say that Anna's musical obsession is now rubbing off on Beth. It's hard to say if they are codependent or do you think that they could possibly resume life and be fully capable in life without one another and that's how he ends the audio recording very very creepy so we go back to the girls and it seems like they have no idea of this creepy sinister vibe about their dad i don't even think they know that he's sleeping with a married woman like they just don't really know much and um they go to their mom's grave they're doing their normal wholesome shit anna goes home she's trying to make a smoothie and she realizes that the milk carton is empty and she gets really pissed off by this so she grabs the empty milk carton comes outside to the backyard and chucks it at beth and so beth is like and she apologizes they walk to the local store together and they buy a milk carton now while they're checking out the store clerk the grocery clerk is kind of telling them like hey you guys should sign up for a talent show like we're having like a neighborhood talent show it's in a barn it's gonna be so cute like you can have you know whatever the talent is you can do it and so they're like okay okay like we'll think about it and they go home and as they're walking home you know you see the next scenes of Anna teaching Beth how to play the guitar because it seems like they want to play the guitar on you know for Mm -hmm. the talent show so it seems like they have all these plans now of course they must get ruined so that night the dad comes home after making all of these creepy little entries on his little mic in the doctor's office he comes home and at night he's got his briefcase he joins the girls in their room they've got a bunk bed situation Anna's at the bottom bunk Beth is at the top bunk and he says okay are you guys ready to get tucked in so they go into bed they're like 16 17 okay and he tucks them in and he starts grabbing a syringe And Anna, she looks like she just really doesn't want to get drugged. It seems like he's drugging them to fall asleep or something. And um, she just seems really upset by it. She's like, I just don't really want to. And she keeps kind of like moving her arm away. And he's like, it's okay, Anna. Why don't you sing me your favorite song? And so she starts singing and he injects her with it. And then once she slowly stops singing because she's now passed out, he walks up the ladder to the top bunk and he injects Beth with the same drug. 
Now the next morning comes around and you're just like getting confused. Like what was the drug? Why is he drugging them? And Mrs. Bishop, the next door neighbor, does her morning routine of walking her big ass Labrador by the name of Bubba. Yeah, so she's like Bubba? walking her dog Bubba. Bubba? No, not Boba. Bubba. Oh. And the dad wakes up the drugged girls and he throws them into the bathtub and he bathes them. Now, I don't know if this is an everyday situation. I just find it to be really creepy. Again, I have no idea if he is washing these girls who are like 16 and naked, if um, he's doing that because he's a germaphobe. Because I know that their disabilities probably wouldn't prevent them from washing their own selves in the morning and right. how incredibly uncomfortable this would be. But maybe it has to do with the fact that he is a crazy germaphobe and he wants to make sure that they're clean still, but yeah they're still really drugged up in the bathtub and eventually he plops them out onto the couches in the living room and they are still drugged up like they're literally leaning against the couch they can't get up i don't know what drug that was but it must have been a heavy dose so they're sitting on the sofa they're closed he probably clothed them now he's making them breakfast and he's bringing it over and he starts trying to like feed it to anna and beth is just like so tired anna's barely holding it together like she's trying to get up but she can't get out of this drug haze. And that's when Mrs. Bishop starts screaming and frantically knocking on the door like, Doctor, you need to help me. You need to help me. And so mm -hmm. he's like, okay, girls, I'll be right back. So he goes to the front door. And this is all in earshot. Like, it's like a small cabin in the woods type situation, right? Mm -hmm. And so he opens the door. And Mrs. Bishop is like, oh, my God, sorry, doctor. I was walking Bubba. And he's like, oh, is something wrong with Bubba? No, 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 no. Bubba found a bone. Bubba found a bone, like, near your backyard. I know that we weren't supposed to go in your backyard. But he just kind of, he kept pulling me and pulling me. And there was, there was, like, this bone. I think it's a human bone. Can you please check it out? I think it's a human bone. And she sees in the back, like, Anna slumped over on the couch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you... Is Anna okay? Yes, Mrs. Bishop, you're disturbing my children right now. Anna is feeling ill, but it's okay. I will check on the bone later. Where did you say it was in the backyard? And she's like, oh, um, near, near the creek. Is there anything I can bring um, for Anna? No, no, no. They, they just need some rest. They? Are both of them sick? Well, you know how viruses are. Anna had it yesterday and Beth got it this morning. So they just need some rest. But don't worry, Mrs. Bishop. I'm going to go out into the bag and I'll, I'll investigate for you. Okay. Well, so, so sorry about that. I, I, I'll, I'll go home now. Bye-bye. Let's go. Bye-bye. Let's go. And so she leaves. Now, it seems like Anna's awake at this point, and she kind of heard most of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So she's waking up from her drugs, and she asks him, you know, what happened? Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, you know, Mrs. Bishop, she's probably off her meds again. Now, that night, he goes into the backyard when the girls are asleep with a shovel in his hand. And Anna wakes up to hear that shoveling noise, and she immediately wakes up Beth, and she runs to the porch, and she has her hands out on the porch railing, and she's just listening. Like, she's just... Because um, Anna is the one who can't see, right? So she's mm -hmm. just listening to everything. Dad didn't know that he, they were listening? No. Okay. And so dad gets back in, you know, everything seems like it's okay now. The next dinner time comes around and Anna starts asking a lot of questions. Anna starts asking the dad, how did mother die? And he keeps saying, you know, I don't like to discuss this while we're at the table. You know, I don't want to talk about this. And he keeps just kind of pushing the topic away. And she's just like, just tell me what happened. And he, he's like, no, I don't want to tell you. And he slams his hand down on the table. And he says, you know, it's because your mom became ill after giving birth to Beth. She fought really hard, but there was really nothing much more that we could do. Now, Anna seems really skeptical about this. And she, she says straight into her dad's face. When I die, I want to be buried in the backyard. Why would she say that? So it seems like she knows something weird is happening. Like she feels like maybe mom's in the backyard or mm. something weird. Like she seems just really questioning his motives, his entire stories. You know, because mm. at the end of the day, these two girls, they really just trust him for all their information and everything. Yeah. And so she just seems really skeptical about everything. Now, Beth, on the other hand, she did not um, hear any of this conversation. So it just seems like she knew that there was, it was tension. He had slammed the hand on the table. She had felt everything move, right? But she doesn't exactly know what the conversation was about. So the doctor ends up going to Mrs. Bishop's house and she's like, oh my gosh, like, thank you so much. I'm so embarrassed. I, I don't know why I thought it was a human bone. And you're so kind of, you know, coming to my house and doing a house call instead of making me go to the office. And he says, well, you know, when a patient of mine says that they found a human bone in my backyard and it was just rocks, 
I take notice. <laughs> and so he says, okay, so these are the next medications you're going to be on. Um, just make sure to take these for the next week. And she's like, what, what are they? A refill of your medications? Now, we know as this conversation was happening, he had swapped out the medication. So it seems like he had swapped it out for something that made her more complacent, probably wouldn't bring it up or question it again. And so she was just like, thank you, doctor. You're amazing. And he leaves the house. Now, at this point, Beth is spending a lot of time at the river trying to learn how to play the guitar. And he starts making more entries. He said, entry 7066. Anne and Beth's medication is beginning to wore off. They've resumed the normal schedule. Anna's spending a lot more time in the backyard. I'm not sure why. It could be due to the abnormally warm weather right now. Now, what we don't, what we, he doesn't know is that they're spending a lot of time in the backyard because Anna is counting the footsteps in the backyard. And she actually stands at the porch where she had heard him shoveling that night and makes Beth go further and further back until it sounds like the same smacking noise that she heard that night. And then she'll run to her and count the footsteps from the porch. Mm -hmm. to see exactly in what direction and how many feet it takes to get there. So that night she falls asleep and she has this crazy nightmare and she wakes up just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And she doesn't want to wake up Beth. So she decides that she's going to grab the shovel and run into the backyard, counting all of our steps to where she had heard the shovel noise from. And she starts digging, hoping to find something. She's like digging and then she's like grabbed at the ground. Now what she doesn't know and can't see is that her dad is standing on the porch Wondering what she's doing. Wondering what she's doing. So it seems like he knows that she's very skeptical. So they start perform they start practicing for their talent show. The talent show becomes like the main part of the movie next. They go to the talent show. It's literally a barn. Like when I said barn, I wasn't thinking like barn wedding. Like I was thinking like barn house vibes. But dead ass the barn. There was like hay everywhere. And so they like go into the barn <laughs> and hey. um, there's like five people there and they're all like, hey. <laughs> A good one. Good one. They finally go onto stage with their little guitars, and at this point, all of the crowd is just like five people. They're like waiting, and Mrs. Long is there with her husband, and she comes up to the doctor and she says, "When can I see you again?" And he says, "Thursday. You have the key to my office." And then she's like, "Okay, bye." And she walks away, back to sit with her husband. And at this point, the girls get up there and she says, we would like to dedicate this song to our mom. And they start singing and playing the guitar. Now, um, we get to the doctor's office and this is the next day. And he says, entry 7310. Their performance was underwhelming. Underwhelming? <laughs> I think Beth needs another dose because her blood results looks like she just needs another dose. Obviously, the musical talents haven't rubbed off on Beth. And he, like, puts down his thing. He's just a mean-ass dude, okay? He goes home and he tells the girls that Beth needs another dose of the medication because her blood cell results aren't looking good and she's going to get sick again. And so he gives me Beth the medication and she immediately starts throwing up. And Anna is like, what's going on? Like, why? Why is she throwing up? Are you sure it's not just making her worse? Like, why are you... Why does she need another dose? She was just doing just fine. Uh -huh. And he was like, I think I need to take her to the hospital. So at this point... Point, Anna is frantically trying to get into the car with them and the dad is like no you have to stay home just leave just stay home I'm gonna bring her back in a couple of days Anna what's wrong with you and so he pushes Anna out of the car and drives away now she's just worried for her sister like this is this is her life you know and Anna wanted to go to the hospital with her so now she's home alone they're gonna be back in what we can presume to be a couple days she ends up spending a lot of her time playing the guitar just wandering around trying to do some cartwheels in the backyard cooks herself a dinner and this dinner is so weird so she cooks herself a dinner and plates it all and she pretends to be all of the three people so she'll sit in her chair and she'll say would you like another glass father and then she'll move to her dad's chair and say of course, Anna, this is absolutely delicious. You've outdone yourself on the chicken tonight. And then she'll sit in her sister's chair and she'll say, shakes her head no, because she she's mute. Mm -hmm. So she like is pretending to be all of them. And then she mainly sits in her father's chair and she says, now who can tell me what the new greatest threat to humanity is? And she goes and sits in both the girls' chairs and raises her hand. And she says, ah, yes, Anna, new diseases. It's back in the dad's chair. Not out of breath. <laughs> I know, right? 
<laughs> I'm out of breath. I'm not even moving. And he's like, yes, correct. Now, tell, can someone tell me why new, new diseases? I'm like, why New Zealand is the biggest threat to the world? Sorry, new diseases is the biggest threat to the world. And she sits back in her chair and she says, because every single day, infinite amount of diseases are being created. Sits back in her dad's chair. Yes, that's correct, Anna. And they're getting smarter. Every day, infinite number of diseases are trying to turn everyone like you and your sister. They're trying to infiltrate all of us. And every day they get one step closer and they are humanity's biggest threat. So we get a couple things from this. Dad is weird. That's what we get from it, first of all. And he probably is a germaphobe because of all the flossing and this like crazy fear of diseases. But maybe the girls had lost their sight and their hearing from a disease, maybe. Like, cause you know, hush, she had meningitis when she was young, something of that sort. Well, the whole dinner was really weird is what I'm trying to say. Now the next morning comes around and Anna rushes over to Mrs. Bishop's house and she starts knocking on the door, Mrs. Bishop, Mrs. Bishop. And Mrs. Bishop opens up and she's like, Anna, what are you, what are you doing? And she says, can I your dog uh, sure if you, if you can handle Bubba be my guest and so she starts walking that big Labrador and just like clockwork that dog pushes her towards where he was barking where he had found the human bone and he starts barking at the same spot and she goes in and she starts digging now she can't see exactly what she's digging at but we can see that there's tons of worms a lot more than you would expect right tons of what? worms so oh it kind of confirms in our head there probably is something decomposing under there whether it's a human or not we kind of believe that it's probably the mom's body but she doesn't see it so she's like oh, it's nothing and she wipes her hand and leaves so the dad brings Beth back home and she is in a wheelchair getting wheeled into the house and one of her arms is gone. It has been amputated. What? And he explains to Anna that they caught the, the disease before it spread and they had to amputate her arm. It was gone. It was attacking all of her nerves. It was really attacking her nervous system and all of her nerves or something like that. And so Beth is now sleeping in a separate room and all night, all she does is cry. Anna goes to that room at night and tries to comfort her, but just, it seems like obviously after something like this, Beth is not the same. Beth refuses to take medicine. Anytime her dad tries to feed her medicine, she will literally throw the medicine out of his hands. I mean, she seems really, really upset. The dad would even ask Anna to crush up the medicine and put it into Beth's food so mm -hmm. that she can feel better. And Anna just doesn't trust the dad. So we see her just throwing all the medicine into the creek after he leaves for work, does not put it in Beth's food. He tries to give her this prosthetic arm fitted over her you know, amputation, mm -hmm. but it just, it doesn't fit and it's too painful. Mm -hmm. And so he says, we'll try again in a few weeks. So we, as the viewer, we know that multiple weeks have passed. And every night Anna goes to bed and she cries herself to sleep because all she can hear is her sister crying herself to sleep too. Like she's just screaming in pain, screaming in anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. And most of the day, Beth is literally screaming, throwing things. Every time the dad leaves for work, he gives the girls a kiss on the cheek. And this time, Beth just slaps him across the face. And so he's like, whatever. He leaves for work and Anna is trying to comfort Beth. And Beth runs outside, starts running to the creek. And Anna tries following her and she shoves Anna onto the ground. And at this point... They both fall onto the ground, kind of like laughing. So this is like the first moment where maybe Beth feels somewhat normal, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they start laughing. They try to relearn how to sign with each other because now that she's missing a hand, it's even more difficult for her to communicate with even her own sister, the only person she was really communicating with. Mm -hmm. And so they get more excited as they come up with ways to reinvent their little language that they've got going on. And that's when dad comes home and tells Anna that he's gonna, she's gonna need another dose soon too. And she says, but I'm feeling fine though. And he says, well, that's the whole point. Like, you know, we want to make sure that you stay feeling fine. And he goes into his room and that night, Beth helps Anna pack a bunch of bags. So we can kind of assume maybe they're trying to run away. Now that night, when everyone goes to sleep, Anna wakes up from another nightmare, goes into the kitchen and she grabs a knife, walks into her dad's room. And we see from Anna's point of view only Mm -hmm. and we see nothing and her dad says Anna and then we hear stabbing noises and then we suddenly hear from Beth's pr we only see things from Beth's perspective where we don't hear anything anymore and we just see the dad crawling around bleeding to death and then finally falls on the ground and is dead 
And so the two girls, they huddle and they hug each other. Now, this was the night that he was supposed to go meet Mrs. Long later. Uh-huh. And so she shows up at the doctor's office. He's not there, but she's got her own key. So she decides to let herself in and she sits at his desk and she's just kind of looking around when she decides, oh, well, what's in this drawer? You know, you get a little nosy. And so op- she opens up the drawer to all the cassette tapes and she starts listening to them. The latest one. Beth's healing process is slow due to her limited mental capacity, growing weaker because of her sister's increasing suspicion about my motives. I'm not sure what to do. So Mrs. Long is like, what the f***? So she reads, listens to the next one. Entry 136. Anna is 18 months old. 2,000 watts to the eyelids has fully impaired her vision. I believe five more weekly sessions and Anna will be completely blind. What the f***? Entry 140. As for Beth, sirens at 120 decibels placed directly to her ears diminish her hearing. In about 8 to 12 weeks, she should have complete loss of hearing. So at this point, you see Mrs. Long, and it's kind of a blur, so you don't really actually hear her like saying things, but you can see that she's calling the police. There's police sirens rushing on over to the house on their way to arrest the dad. They have no idea that he's been murdered, but they're trying to arrest him. Entry 7202. I'm lost. The girls have turned away from me after everything I've done for them. I've never imagined that they could be so selfish. Everything used to be so clear. End. And the girls are seen riding their bicycle together, the one bike, away from the house. So it seems like the police will enter, you know, and find that he's been killed. And they're on the run. That was it? That's it. It felt like a much more of a... But why? It doesn't answer anything. I think this is a gypsy situation where, um, because, I mean, well, this is the true crime version of it, but there's a lot of movies, I think, that center around this type of situation, which is man chosen by proxy. I never know how to pronounce it correctly, but it's when parents actively do things to mess up their kids' health, whether to permanently impair them, disable them, so that they get A, sympathy from the crowd, sympathy from communities, but B, so that they feel so needed by this kid, that this kid will die without me. And so it seems like he had impaired them right at birth because he, I don't know, either or he wanted like a sick experiment. But I think the last clip where he said, how could they be so selfish after everything I've done for them Mm -hmm. makes me feel like he just wanted them to rely on him rather than on each other. Mm. Like, I think that he thought that doing this and pairing them would make them rely fully on him, dependent on him. Uh Because all of the scenes where they're like, please, dad, sing us a song. He seems like... So like like a cult leader, like very oh. like, oh, I could never. Y'all gone to und- like like really dude? <laughs> like yeah. just sing the song then if you really well, wanted to. What about to. the mother? I think he murdered her. I think maybe she was catching on. Or maybe she found out. Oh. And probably wanted to take the kids away. Again, speculation obviously. I don't know if the director has like come out and or the writer or if I'm not I don't think this was an adaptation of like a book or anything, but if it was, I don't think they've like come out and answered all these questions, but it seems like she was probably murdered and buried okay. in the backyard. That makes sense. So right? the two girls kind of find a way to leave to to work with each other yeah. and then he didn't like that. Mm-mm. He wanted them to just What are those depend drugs for that he keeps giving them? I'm not sure make them weaker yeah maybe like physically feel ill but like what kind of drug would that be so i think also like amputating her arm when it wasn't necessary Mm -hmm. it feels like again he's like maybe if i do this they can't communicate so they'll both depend on me but it just didn't work lots of amputation stories recently i apologize (laughs) but i hope you guys enjoyed this one this one i found on tiktok and people seem to really like it i don't know if they watched it or they just like watched the trailer I liked it. I wouldn't say it's like a like a complex, intense, like psychological thriller. I feel like the whole way, you know, the dad is f***ed up. Like, you know, you can already be like, okay, from the get-go, the minute that he walks into that door, he just seems a little forked up. It seems like probably they were impaired by someone. I don't think that they were born like this. I don't think something natural happened to them that caused this. It all just seems really sinister. So you don't get any crazy plot twist. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was good. Like the actors are really good, especially I think they had a very low budget and it was just really the three of them in that one house. So I think it was done really, really well. There was really only maybe like two other characters, Mrs. Long and Mrs. Bishop. That's it. There wasn't a lot going on, but I think it was really good. So I give this one maybe a solid five out of 10. (laughs) 
<laughs> which is really high. A solid five out of ten. Fifty percent. Okay, okay, no. Half okay, now when you say fifty percent, like a seven out of ten. No, but I rated the perfection like an eight out of ten, and I really like the perfection. This one, I did not think about it after I was done watching it. The perfection, I thought about it while I was going to sleep that night, you know. So that one's like a different level of like I keep thinking about this scene or I keep thinking about this. But this one, there wasn't anything that made me feel like ooh, but like thought provoking. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Have you guys watched this one? Is this very similar to the Sarah Paulson movie called Run on Hulu right now? I know that one's been highly requested, but I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Make Make sure to check out source linked in the description for 30% off and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!